Good defensive work to avert the danger, but it's still with Davis. Connecting well with Williams. And that cross intercepted by Titchfield. As a coach of Titchfield High, Raymond Gordon would have been influenced, especially at the international level, by Pep Guardiola. Here's a, a cross, and it just didn't go to the intended target, but better of the opportunity, certainly with Port and Tony at the moment. Titchfield have to clear, and they failed to do so very well. And it's pressure now mounting. Keron George loses out on this one, and now Titchfield, well, they're trying to come out of traffic. So foul there. Karen George, the man to watch for Port Antonio. Five goals to assist this season. Looping ball. Here comes Stitchfield. Foul there called against Giovanni Harris. So it's booted up. Deontay made that Wilson the intended target. He loses out. And that was a foul he committed. Did Keandre Wilson. Here comes Stitchfield. Marshall connects with Brian now. Brian passes it to Harris. Miscued pass, but it still is with Titchfield. Marshall. Swings it across, and Mackenzie with the header couldn't bring it on target. And yeah, they are building in confidence in Stitchfield. And it was a smart turn from Benoit Marshall to get beyond his marker and whip this delightful ball across. And Mackenzie, yeah, he really should have done better there. But it's still nil all after five minutes in this encounter. Here's Stitchfield once more. Brian. Booted forward. feel for their own credit they would have lost out on one of their defensive anchors in the form of O'Neill Bryan he now dons the purple and white for Kingston College and there's a, a general sentiment in the parish that quite a few of their better players have left the lush greenery of this parish for Kingston City to play for other schools here's Mackenzie Played out by the captain for Port Antonio for a throw in. Taken quickly, it's with Tingle. Whips it across. The intended target was Harris, but that's cut out. Still with Titchfield, though. Shot from distance. Easily held by the custodian for Port Antonio, Devane Rogers. And that shot came from Jalen Parks. So the sentiment, especially from the earlier 
the matches certainly not being demonstrated here. Titchfield looking quite comfortable in possession. And they have looked more purposeful. Throw and check in. Here's Titchfield. Oh, the cheerleaders there here as well. Can this be where Port Antonio tried to rebuild? No, it's still with Titchfield. Marshall. Harris. That's with Brian now. Brian turns inside. That's cut out by the captain again. He's been resolute. Corner kick taken quickly. Brian to Marshall. And that's over the top. It's a goal kick now for Port Antonio. I have a few friends that have spoken to me about this derby. My good friend in college would have been a student of both of these institutions, Port Antonio, Compre as they call it, for five years. Then he went to Teachfield for sixth form. He's now in the UK, so he's conflicted as I told him that the derby was on in earnest. Conflicted to an extent. He still supports Compre at his heart. But if Tichil were to win, he wouldn't be too upset, I can imagine. Yeah, that's the coach of Port Antonio. Marlon Hilton is actually the national under 14 female coach, a very good girls coach. Teaches English and English literature. Titchfield. Able to really get that to a target. Port Antonio, they have quite a young team. Only two of their players would have had experience in the Da Costa Cup from last season. And they were not even prominent, says Coach Hilton. But here they try to come now. But in possession is Russell. Happy to send it all the way back to his goalkeeper, Justin Harrison. So about seven of their players are 15-year-olds. That's Port Antonio. And a few others are 16-year-olds. So they, even if they have a hard task in the next round, should they make it to the round of 32, as I think they're poised to, the experience would do them well. Here they come now. And uh, Caron George, their marksman, flagged offside. Brian. Titchfield, they really have looked very well. Brian trying to get on the end of that one, but that. But in true Portland fashion, the field does have a, a pit, particular luster to it. The greenery is something to take note of. And I spoke to the vice president of the FA, and they've certainly done a lot of work to get the field at this level, and there's still much more they're gunning to do to build the sport in the parish. Of course, they would have had representation at the Premier League level, way back in the early 2000s through St. George's. That team is now called Port Landers FC. Here they come now, Port Antonio. George gets the pass across. And that was too close to O'Hara Headley. Handled ball there. 
Shaquan Hardware, who has a goal to his name this season, unable to get the control perfect. And uh, yeah, the vice president told me that they would really love to have Premier League action back in the parish. And they're trying to get all the amenities in order. Charge trying to advance, but that's cut out effectively by Kevon Clark. Harris, they're sending that one. Pick it up is Gibbs. Gibbs, back to Harris. Harris, speculative or perhaps wasteful. Giovanni Harris. Antonio, they've definitely been trying to be a bit more direct. Titchfield trying to play through the different thirds. And it has borne some amount of dividends for Titchfield as they step forward. Brian. Russell. Tingle will get it across. And the intended target there, Deante Gibbs unable to get a head to it. But Port Antonio now they counter. Search and run, but it's intercepted by Parks. And now they are able to recycle Titchfield. Brian and Parks and Harris there making their own triangles. Trying to come forward and break the lines now, but that was well cut out. Wilson, unable to connect, but it's back with them. Shot from distance. And some distance away from the goal, that's the two goal to assist men, Jardine Dice. So, stands here and I'm sure they're looking at the Sportsmax app for this match as well I wonder if he knows if he, he's on camera yeah they're loving the action a crucial defensive header there. Danger was lurking from that looping ball. Here they come forward. And the final pass let them down once more. Port Antonio. And there's a particular trend you see in Derby encounters the strength of the rivalry runs deep and it's a cultural enterprise in and of itself no matter how poorly a team has been performing when it comes down to a derby the sheer magnitude of the game can bring their performance to a brand new dimension and well that's what we're seeing for Titchfield so far Gibbs they're losing a possession And the captain there, Dean Johnson, not doing enough to keep the possession for them. It's a throw and taken quickly, and now it's with Russell. Happy to recycle with a tingle. Tingle now going directly to the goal. Brian was the intended target, but so was the man in goal, Devane Rogers for Port Antonio, spreading it out quickly. It's now with Dice trying to turn. Does so. 
Dice. Get in by two. Dice got the return ball from Kiroon George, but loses possession. Davis to his captain Johnson. It's now with Donji right. Williams. Dice. Trying to set Kerun George on his run, but that was overcooked. Justin Harrison able to handle it easily in the end. Vary Marshall playing it up. Clark. Good pass in for Titchfield. Harris has option in the form of Tingle. Uses that man out wide. He gets it to Tingle now. Trying to get by one. Happy to concede a corner is Mario Davis of Port Antonio. This is their second corner teach fields. Sent across. Free headers and the shot. In the end from the man, Kevon Clark went wide. Uses a square pass. Does the captain Johnson to right. Have options in the middle. First one being Williams. All the way out to Davis now. Davis trying to get by Gibbs. Plays it to Williams. Plays it in the box, but Harrison happy to see that one. But all the way out. Player. Titfield bench here being called to attend to Kevon Clark. He has you know, time to get off the field. Clark, he retreated off the field. Play resumes. Titchfield in possession. George to Williams. Wilson, the intended target, had to check his run. He was on side. It's with George now, who gets the shot. And Harrison had to dig really deep. Didn't get the best hand to it. But the danger was averted in the end. Here's a look at the shot again. Yeah, he really had to dive low, did Harrison in goal. So what a break now. Hot and humid conditions in 
the parish of Portland. But Titchfield, for their credit, they've really looked much better than many of many individuals would have expected. Even speaking with quite a few of the past students, they kind of resigned themselves to a loss today, but by the look of the first 20 odd minutes, they have given perhaps even more than Port Antonio in terms of attacking finesse. That's the vice president of the Portland FA, Raquel Russell. And yeah, she's on a marketing job. She definitely wants the parish to look at its best. And yeah, I love that kind of intention and it, from a administrator. Yeah, it, it, it shows that you mean something. Or the, the, the sport means something to you. Yeah. Well, they use every means to be comfortable. <laughs> so play set to resume in a short while as the players go back in possession. They would have had the privilege of getting some amount of tuition from their coaches. So throw in for Port Antonio. Deep in the offensive third. Trying to get it to Dice. Dice under some amount of pressure. It's now with Williams. Sends it in, but Marshall played it out. Zavori Marshall stripped of possession. Cardiff Marshall did well, Mackenzie rather, did well to take that kick quickly, but that was cut out. Port Antonio now through Dice. Dice trying to play George. George on the end of it. George finishes! That's goal number six for the lead man for Port Antonio. They were growing in confidence in the past 10 minutes. And they came together very well. And what a pass that was. And what a first touch from Dice. Yeah. And that pass and that first time finish. Something to show the youngsters. And yeah, the surface certainly not bad here. Ball able to flow naturally so it's 1-0 for Compre Port Antonio High in this the Port Antonio derby let's see if Titchfield can make a contest of it I like their build up play can they maintain that kind of discipline or will they try to Score route one. Russell. Four goals to this man, Chadil Russell. Working hard there was Cardiff McKenzie, but losing out. Just hearing the coach, Marlon Hilton, there saying, you're moving a bit slow. Yeah, I've noticed that. In the passage of play, certainly not the quickest game by any stretch. Using with now, Port Antonio stepping forward. Getting the cross, Harrison on the end of that one. Here they come now, but 
easily handled by Devane Rogers. Williams does well in the middle of the park. Good turn by Dice. Got it to George. George with the shot. Flashing wide. And yeah, that's the sentiment across the entire ground here at Carter Park. Harrison certainly not pleased with the defensive coverage that he's been getting. But that was a good turn from Kiron George. Really should have buried that one. But on the quality that puts him as the man to watch. One of the strategies that the coach had mentioned, Coach Hilton, is that right throughout the year, the, the teams at the various age group levels play different inter-parish competitions, intra-parish competitions, I should say. That's from Port Antonio. So that was the secret behind the form of success that they would have had, of course. If you're just joining us, they would have made it to the Super Cup in 2015, quarterfinals in 2018 and 19, semifinals of the Ben Francis Cup in 2018, and in 2019 they mentioned that they only missed out on the Dacosta Cup semifinal by two points from their quarterfinal group. So they're coming forward again. Hardware on the end of that one. Hardware uses Williams. Under pressure, he able to shake his marker. That's with Dice now. Gets it on his right foot. Goes through traffic but loses possession. Dante Wright stepping forward. Able to get it to hardware. Booted out of touch by Kevon Clark there for Titchfield. Recognizes the danger. But Port Antonio, they certainly have grown in this game. In the opening exchanges, Titchfield looked a bit more purposeful. But that's weighted somewhat. Davis gets the cross. Control. It's poor on that occasion. Trading dice there has some injury concerns. Free Headley. Calling for medical assistance. I wonder what's in his mind. He's on his feet now. Trading dice. Come in. Come in. 
acrobatically cleared by Donji Wright. Still with Titchfield. Hard, we're playing it back to Davis. Sends it forward. Caron George now. See the corner kick there. Should be their first corner. Port Antonio. Pressure being applied there. But Johnson able to mop up the danger. He's playing it to hardware now. Tingle and Clark. The parks combining, but pass inaccurate. Wilson able to get by Marshall. Zavorio, Marshall there on the ball for Titchfield. Cardiff McKenzie was trying to get that under his control, but they come forward, hardware and dice. Referee playing the advantage. Back with hardware now. Trying to get in the box. Hardware fires to the near post, but that went just wide of the upright. All right. She's on the fashion block. That was a delightful ball there, yeah. Hardy did well. Shaquain Hardware. I wonder if he's a relative of a Jamil Hardware who'd have been a standout of Bridgeport back in the day. In their title winning team. So 2006, if my memory serves me right, yeah. Bridgeport, Anthony Patrick, who's now at St. Catherine High. That's in the Bannon Cup, by the way. Controlled it, Brian. Marshall trying to keep it in play for Titchfield. All right, all right. 
So hey, Andrew Edwards would have been the coach in that 2003 team. Here they come forward. That shot was intercepted easily. They should be able to recycle now. Giovanni Harris with that ball, but played out now. Dice beats one, still Dice. Gets by another, Jardine Dice. Under pressure, but he beats that man. Plays it to Hardware. Hardware two under pressure. It's brought down in a dangerous position for a free kick. And Jadil Russell is the guilty man. See, Andrew Edwards would have been the coach in that 2003 team. Would have left eventually himself a Portland native. And would have won with St. Elizabeth Technical in 2009. And beyond that would have been a distinguished coach with the under with the national under 17 team. Certainly a well-learned coach, Andrew Edwards. So, change made. Here's a free kick. Oh, it was on target and a hand, a firm hand by Justin Harrison just veered it off. It really had fewer behind it, that kick. It's a corner kick now. And that was a melee there, the goalkeeper down. Medical staff being called. Someone quickly to. Hey, it would love to see exactly what happened. Here's a sequence of play. Not sure there was nothing much. On it. Yeah, so his hand seemed to have touched another player inadvertently. Nothing untoward about it. Here's another look at the goal. It was a beautiful touch by Dice to bring it under control. And the pass to Kiron George for his sixth of the season was equally exquisite. Yeah, that was 1-0. That's a goal. The only goal in the game so far. Crowd building up. I'm sure Gerard would love to be on one of those. Yeah. Take me there. <laughs> but look at the sea, look at the ocean. It's so beautiful. This is Portland. So Justin Harrison is back on his feet and hands are now 
ready to cope with the pressures of goalkeeping. Charge. Gets by Harris. Tries to. Hard beer. That shot just high from Keandre Wilson. Giovanni Harris loses possession to Hardware. Hardware was trying to steamroll through traffic. Here they come now. Gibbs trying to get on the end of that one, but firm defending from DeAndre Wright. Some discomfort he was in Donji right after that attempted clearance. Marshall, diminutive but certainly solid in defense. Zavoria Marshall, the number five for Titchfield. So Marshall takes a free kick. Cleared expeditiously by Omari Davis. So three minutes of time to be added on. Can Titchfield make the most of it or can Port Antonio consolidate? They should be able to consolidate as they come forward. Or do they? Tingle for Titchfield. And that shot team in the end. Rogers able to hold it. Across. Oh, just over the top. Tefano Bryan there really should have buried that one. It was served on a platter. Look at that. Yeah, he really should have brought that one on target. Really was a poor defensive clearance from Port Antonio that gave Marshall the opportunity to whip that delightful ball across for Tefano Bryan. It's a throw in for Titchfield once more.
Marshall. Shot from distance. Off target from Javon Tingle. It's with hardware. Does well to keep it in play. Nicholas Williams now. Trying to get dice in the picture, but that's cut out. Here's McKenzie for Titchfield. Bit too calm. And he ended up losing possession was Cardiff McKenzie. Referee O'Hara Headley has seen enough of the first half in the Port Antonio Derby. Port Antonio High School versus Stitchfield. And the latter have a goal advantage, courtesy of the man you just saw on screen, Caron George. So at the half, Port Antonio one, Titchfield nil. Welcome back to Portland for the Port Antonio Derby at Connor Park in the parish. South American World Cup qualifiers on Sportsmax. Venezuela versus Chile live Tuesday, 4 p.m. 5 in the Eastern Caribbean. Paraguay versus Bolivia, Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. 6.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. And also Uruguay versus Brazil, Tuesday, 7 p.m. 8 in the rest of the Caribbean. CONCACAF Nations League on Sportsmax 2, Martinique versus El Salvador. It's live tonight, 6 p.m., 7 in the rest of the Caribbean. Also tonight, Trinidad and Tobago versus Guatemala, 8 p.m., 9 in the Eastern Caribbean that on Sportsmax 2 and Barbados versus Dominican Republic 
7 p.m. 8 in the rest of the Caribbean on Sportsmax Plus. And yeah, for your viewing pleasure, Belize versus Bermuda, 9 p.m. 10 in the rest of the Caribbean, that too on Sportsmax Plus. Getting ready for second half action between Port Antonio High School and Titchfield High School. History and tradition. Titchfield, they'll definitely have that from an historical perspective, the fifth oldest institution. But the Port Antonio Derby has been dominated by Port Antonio in recent years. They're on hand to witness whichever team they support or they have a family member or friend representing Port Antonio there. They have a one goal cushion at the moment. But it would be hard to write off Titchfield Bates based on what we've seen in the play so far. From whichever angle you look, it's really beautiful. Such a picturesque parish. Quaint in some respect, but yeah, the natural beauty remains uncorrupted by overdevelopment, some would say. Those who love that form of tourism, greener tourism, yeah, they'd really love Portland. The man on the score sheet so far in the afternoon, Kiron George. Six goals this season and an assist as well. Two assists, rather. Jardine Dice with a registered and assist today. What a beautiful control that was. Second half action on the way. Port Antonio showing their intentions early. That cut out by Titchfield. Can they reduce the deficit? Cut the deficit, really. Here's Cardiff McKenzie turning inside. Can he get the ball to Marshall? He does. Forced wide. It's with. Zavoria Marshall now. And yeah, that was poor in the end. Purposeful they look. As they started the first half, they have resumed with that kind of flurry in the second half. Can they keep that momentum? Goal scorer, sco goal scorer I beg your pardon, George. Trying to find Wilson. Bringing themselves on the pressure is Titchfield. Daniel Ireland on the ball. Fouled by Pernoy Marshall, the number 10 for Titchfield. Kieran George behind this one. Lifts it up. Easily handled by Justin Harrison in goal for Titchfield. 
puts it forward. Mackenzie had to do well to bring it under control. Gets the return ball. Mackenzie tries to get by Hardware, does so. Get, getting it across, but the intended target, Deontay Gibbs, had not timed his run as well as he perhaps should have. Still in possession, though, with Titchfield. Zavoria Marshall. The square pass to Warren Edwards, who came on as a first half substitute. It's now with Keandre Wilson for Port Antonio. Charge. Trying to get by Marshall. Ireland. Poor pass that from Marshall. Will they be made to pay? It's hard wear. To Davis. To Nicholas Williams. Williams. Keandre Wilson is not amused by that. Pitchfield coming forward. Parks there overcooking that one. They do get a throw in though. Titchfield. Marshall. Russell. His dice for Port Antonio loses possession. Giovanni Harris now has it to Mackenzie. Yeah, the referee will certainly go to his pocket for a yellow card. Flash to Brunoy Marshall. Late challenge on Keandre Wilson. Rather cynical. As it stands in the seeding, of course, after the group stage in the De Costa Cup and the Manning Cup, teams are seeded based on the history in the competition, last year's results, as well as the number of wins and other metrics, such as whether they are, they've topped the groups or they are a best third place finishers or a runner up. So as it stands, Port Antonio would be seeded number 29 and that's of course subject to change based on other results and other games to be played. Here's Wilson getting in. Easy does it for Giovanni Harris. Calm as a cucumber. Averting that danger. Plays it easily to Parks. It was a bit too nonchalant there. Luckily for him, Kirun George would have played out for throwing for Titchfield. Marshall gets by one. Still Marshall. Showed a bit too much of the ball to Jeho Thompson. Made no mistake in playing it out. Yeah, Carnot Park is filling up nicely. They have about 39 minutes of football to see. Plus, any stoppages. Right, 
So as I was mentioning earlier, they would be ranked 29th at the current moment, and that would see them facing Dintil, who at the current moment are ranked fourth. And that should be a tough matchup for them. Dintil, a hard running, hard working team. And many individuals expect that they should have a deep run in the competition, should Dintil. Interestingly, that's the furthest the Da Costa Cup has come. St. Catherine, as you go further east, it really hasn't been there. So, the number 10 has been substituted, Bernard Marshall, and coming on for Titchfield. is Kemar Lee. Also exiting the game, Tafana Bryan. Coming on was number nine, Brian Williams. A few substitute warming up for Port Antonio as well. Just plays it out. Off touch. Titchfield, they certainly have looked a bit purpose, more purposeful than Port Antonio. Final product, though, has been missing. Zavori Marshall. Jadil Russell. Cardiff McKenzie. Trying to find Gibbs on that occasion for a neat flick, but that didn't catch on as he'd have liked. Here comes Port Antonio, turning into traffic, turning away from traffic is hardware. Trying to find Wilson. Found the byline instead. Throw and taken quickly. Russell trying to connect with the substitute, Brian Williams. That's Keandre Wilson. Seen on screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'd all love to be on a drone just to get that shot from our eyes. And if we're not on a drone, we can actually be on a yacht. <laughs> Untainted beauty, Portland. He's been attended to. Few substitutions to be made. Perhaps he'll be one of them.
Coach Hilton giving them a final talking to. So coming on, number 10 and the number 16, Twain Lopez and Roger Wiggins. Here they come forward now. Dice. Good challenge that to avert the danger. But it's still with Port Antonio with George. George! Over the top there. Here's Titchfield. Devore Marshall. Russell. Rogers in goal. Able to handle that one easily. Mario Davis stay down. Feel the substitutes getting warm for Port Antonio. Shaquane Hardry would have come off as well as Keandre Wilson. So Portland known for quite a few national treasures for those who delight themselves in things gastronomical. Boston Jerk Center, certainly one of those places that should be on your must visit list. And the beach isn't too bad at all. It's perhaps one of the most beautiful beaches I've seen in the island of Jamaica. Boston Beach, yeah. Here's Titchfield. Russell, uh, his father, had some kind words to say about him. He's certainly not a, afraid of fire from distance. comes Port Antonio. Warren Edwards. Could run that from McKenzie. Field once more. Falls to Gibbs. Plays it back to Marshall. Marshall. Forced to recycle. Jalen Parks. 
turns inside. Can he release Williams a substitute? Ball was a bit late and the clearance off camera, off your shot. Hit a woman on the head to the delight of quite a few of the spectators. A bit of shade and fraud in that one. Yeah, that's the lady. The glasses remained. <laughs> it's all good and fun. Giovanni Harris, Marshall, beautifully taken, and the shot instinctive, didn't have any pace on it though, easily handled by the goalkeeper. Jardine Dice there being attended to by the referee, doesn't seem as if the coach is too keen on substituting him. Cardiff McKenzie there did well to control that one under pressure, but unable to really get the shot off. So Jardine McKen Jardine Dice he'll be coming off. Here's Marshall. Marshall turns. Finds Russell from distance. He certainly isn't afraid of shooting from that range some 35 yards away. Perhaps the best off the lot so far. Let's see if he can get one on target beyond the goalkeeper. Harris trying to find Williams. Gibbs. They were appealing for a handball. Williams tries to get it across. Port Antonio able to clear. They played off field. Tingle. Doing just enough there. Parks now takes the throw quickly. Cut out by George. Rajay Wiggins, a substitute. Back to George, trying to connect with Wiggins. Now the substitute be getting ready to be made by Titchfield. Another water break being called by the official.
Train Lopez there getting a firm talking to. A pep talk of the sorts. Titchfield cheerleaders there. Getting ready to entertain, I suppose. Here comes Port Antonio Wiggins, a substitute. Unable to get it across, intercepted well by Jaden Parks. Concedes a corner. So Deshaun Dacus came on for Titchfield. Leaving the game was Deontay Gibbs. Another substitute was made by Port Antonio. Jordan Dice came off. Well, they're not afraid to entertain. They may be behind, but they are showing some amount of skill. No, it's not Monday night football. It's Friday afternoon football. And it's in Jamaica. Yeah, what a spectacle is a schoolboy football in the island of Jamaica. Well, for those who like this genre, it's taking over now. And Gerard is bobbing to it. I know Phil isn't. Back to the action on the field. Williams on the ball for Port Antonio. Team attempt that on the goal by Port Antonio. Easily handled by Justin Harrison. So, an indirect kick. Being awarded to Fort Antonio for that indiscretion by the goalkeeper Justin Harrison. Of course. Port Antonio unable to make a direct attempt on goal. He must pass to another player before shooting to goal. Here they try. It's over the top. Certainly we can't forget 2017 in the Champions Cup. Semi-final. Tariq McGee of Jamaica College firing directly beyond the goalkeeper Rodriguez of Kingston College to the delight of all the JC supporters it went in but eventually it was called off McKenzie is trying to get in the box but cut out in time Marshall Williams doing well to keep on the ball. Connecting with George. George unable to get it under his control. Easy. Concession of a goal kick on that occasion. Hey, hey, 
Beautiful change of play that to Wiggins now for Port Antonio. Can he get it across? Easily handled by Harrison in goal for Titchfield. Warren Edwards coming forward. Wiggins. Intercepted by Tingle. Russell. Williams, a substitute now on the ball. Cut out by the defense of Port Antonio. Yeah, the tempo of the game has really increased in the past moments. End to end stuff now. Here comes Port Antonio. That one went all the way across. Yeah, bewildered Justin Harrison wondering how a corner kick has been awarded. Zavoria Marshall there. And is holding on to his feet. So, Marshall, they're being attended to. So, as it stands, it is a corner kick. Not sure I saw that or any contact. That would have given rise to a corner kick. But yeah, the referee's decision. Remains. We're going to Gerard by the sideline. He has some information for us. Well, well, not really that much information, but rather I'm having a chat with the girls here who you just saw cheering a while ago. And uh, let me talk to this young lady right here. Tell us a little bit about Titchfield High's cheerleading team. Titchfield High's cheerleading team. I mean, we don't really have a coach right now because our coach is on leave. But regardless, we push through to support our school, to support the fans, the crowd, everybody. Without a coach. Yeah, so it, uh, this is the first game that you've been at for Titchfield or you've just been following them throughout the season? This is our first game at Titchfield match. Why did you choose this game? Because it's their last. Why not make it count? Support them. Win or lose, one Titchfield. All right, well, give me a cheer or something. Just do something. Tell, give me something. Yeah, well, one of our Sportsmax workers, Antoinette, was also, she's a past student of Tickshield. She was a cheerleader as well, I think. No, she wasn't. But uh, if, if she was, yeah, but, uh, you know, that's it. Tickshield High, their cheerleading team. Antoinette was a footballer, I've been told, by my producer. So, yeah, Antoinette is a, a woman of many talents now. She's at Sportsmax, honing her skills even further. So, yeah, Tickshield High, cheerleading, their school below right now, behind 1-0, but... Probably with some cheers, some more cheers, they'll get on top. Back to you, Dean. Thank you so much, Gerard. I'd love to find out what drew Antoinette to football. We'll have a talk on the, well, perhaps she won't be on the bus going back into Kingston. It's her hometown, yeah, so she'll be staying. 
for the weekend. An extended weekend. We have a holiday on Monday. National Heroes Day in Jamaica on Monday. So goalkeeper for Port Antonio. 78th minute of this encounter. Here's George. Tingle came across to avert any danger from the run of Wigan. Ireland. Sends it in the box. Unable to really get it under control was Lopez. Wiggins. Kenzie doing well to flick Ireland. Yeah, well, by the sound of it, that ball hit someone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's the evidence right there on camera. <laughs> Of course, Portland, as a parish, would have produced the likes of Diva Orgil, currently playing his trade in Turkish top flight football. He is a fast student of Titchfield. Perhaps he's following the action on the app wherever he is in Turkey. Titchfield, they have a player down, but happy to continue in play. Williams, Mackenzie would have really loved that comment directly to his preferred foot, but it was behind. And Port Antonio happy to give up the the throw in there. Time now for the Sportsmax app moment of this encounter. Came courtesy of the sequence of play. Dice finding Karun George, who found the back of the net for the sole goal at the moment. He's the sixth of the season, Karun George. The Sportsmax app moment of the game. Don't miss the excitement of Issa Schoolboy Football on the Sportsmax app. Download from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Catch all the league action and updates on the Sportsmax app. So still, Port Antonio leads one goal to nil. Pitchfield trying to come forward. Giovanni Harris. Will he try to go from distance? Goes to lay. Good defensive work that. 
And then now Port Antonio have acres of real estate. Still Port Antonio in the box. And oh my. Unimpressive goalkeeping from what seemed to be a speculative shot. He's saying, look there, but we can only look on the goal. The substitute making his own mark, Shavari Walker. Yeah, that had no place going in the back of the net. Goalkeeper really must rue that when he sees that on the highlight reel. So the realm of possibility has shifted on the continuum. It is certainly a tougher task for Titchfield if there was any expectation that they would come back in this encounter. in there. Titchfield, Williams. Getting the snapshot off. Lee gets it across. But it's outside. Well, a bit avant garde. Would want to be. Stomped on with those pair of shoes. Now the substitute being made by Port Antonio. Ireland coming off. And Mario Jones coming on. They're fouled by Wiggins. It's a free kick for Titchfield. Williams. Russell. Marshall. Williams really didn't recognize that pattern of play. Really should have penetrated the half space. Challenge there, reckless challenge. 
shown a red card. Totally unnecessary. That challenge on Marshall. And a Donji right. Yeah, studs out. Two footed. He really wanted an early shower, Donji right. Marshall, unconventional, has been stretched off. Really was a crunching challenge. Tingle with the kick. Unable to get in the area. Nice being applied to the... Needing a lot of compression. Kirun George. Russell for Titchfield. Chedil Russell. George changes the play. Williams. Johnson did really well to get behind and to avert the danger. Five minutes of added time in this half. Wiggins. Nonchalant about that one was Wiggins. I wonder what they're talking about. Penetrating run this. Cleared by Giovanni Harris. Concedes a corner kick though. Comes inside. Harrison doing enough there. Williams finding McKenzie. Still McKenzie. McKenzie still. McKenzie! 
promised more than the actual gift. Would have been spectacular had it gone on target even. Harris. Yellow card being shown to the score of the second goal, Shavari Walker. You can watch schoolboy football for free on the Sportsmax app. What a good example here in the parish of Portland. Can Jadil Russell provide another great moment in schoolboy football from distance? Russell. He has the range, but he needs the scope. They're yeah, loving the action on the camera. Any moment now, referee Darina Affleck can blow off this one. Can this be a moment? It really should have been a moment for Mackenzie. It's really been the picture of the entire game for Titchfield. Numerous half chances. That really became quartered. That's the final whistle. Darren Affleck has seen enough. The Port Antonio derby goes the way, as has been. Goes the way of Port Antonio High School, as has been the custom in the past few years, goals courtesy of Karun George and the substitute Shavari Walker. Sealed and consolidated Port Antonio as the runner up in this group. Yeah, confirmation of the full-time score, Port Antonio 2, Titchfield 0. Here's a full match highlights. Titchfield would have started with a level of aggression and purpose. And this was the first real attempt on goal. Beautiful delivery from Brenoy Marshall and Cardiff McKenzie unable to bring the header on target and they had quite a few opportunities like that did Titchfield on the other end Port Antonio they showed their moments of brilliance Caron George forcing a save out of the goalkeeper Justin Harrison another look at it Perhaps a bit unconvincing was his goalkeeping overall. But look at this sequence. Beautiful touch from Jardine Dice. Finding the open man, Karun George. Goal number six for the season, the first of the afternoon. Port Antonio won. Another look at that touch. Yeah, delightful. And the pass equally exquisite. And the finish. A striker's finish. You can look at it all afternoon. Caron George opening the scoring for Port Antonio. 
call in the support from the fans who assembled. He had another shot, flashed that one wide of the target, but such was the intent, the attacking intent of Port Antonio. Here they came forward again. This time it was through Shaquane Hardware. Couldn't force a save. But that was a directly going for the post. They had another moment, did Titchfield. And look at the ball that came to Tafana Ryan, the number seven, as they close out that half. Really should have been on target. Second half action now. And what seemed to be a speculative shot from Shavari Walker after acres of space had been opened up for Port Antonio. Yeah, that had no business passing any keeper. Yeah, and he really will rue that one. That has to be a learning moment for him. Reckless from Don J. Wright. Referee Affleck sending him to an early shower. The red card for that challenge. And McKenzie in the dying moments could have had a consolation for Titchfield, but such was the afternoon for them. Doreen Affleck, seen enough, the Port Antonio Derby going the way of Port Antonio High School. In it's a schoolboy football, the Costa Cup action. Here are the full-time match statistics. Titchfield had 14 shots, three of those were on target. Port Antonio High, they had 12 shots, but only they had four on target, two goals. Nine fouls, five to Titchfield. A yellow card apiece, one red card for Port Antonio. Two offsides for them as well. They had the bulk of the corners, four to Titchfield's one. Three saves made by the Port Antonio custodian and a Titchfield. At the end, they had the line sheer possession 52, but the goals. The two goals went to Port Antonio High School ahead of Titchfield, and they are the winners of this derby. We're standing by with Gerard, and he has the KFC man of the match. Thank you so much, Dean. Jardine Dice, you are the KFC big deal man of the match. Congratulations to you, sir. Let me have a chat with you now. Uh, tell me about that game. What do you think your performance was like and the team overall? Well, we've been training, so um, my part of the game is to distribute the ball, and we, we did that, and we get goals, which, which is good. So, yeah, so you, far, did, you did distribute the ball very well. Getting an assist. Talk to me about that assist well, when you saw... Well, um, if you know the, the ball at the Brian, huh? he's my um, idol. Yeah. He's uh, a midfielder. He passed the ball well. So that pass is similar to his pass throughout the, um, his game. So, yes. All right. So you're into the second round now. Yes, sir. Um, of course, you'll be looking forward to getting good results and going as far as you can in the tournament. How far, though, do you think this Port Antonio team can get? Well, if we train hard as we are doing now, we can reach to the quarterfinal at least, and we just have to take it as much at the time, much at a time, and perform well. All right, we look forward to seeing you throughout the yes. entire rest of the season. So thank you so much, Jordi, guys, and congratulations to you once again. Let's have a chat now with the coach from Titchfield High, Raymond Gordon. Coach, of course, you wanted to go out on a high, but uh, you, your team really started the game quite well. Uh, yeah. Glimpses of what we you would have seen, said that you, they were capable of. When you look at the, the, the match, how would you assess it overall? Um, it, it, it was it was a good game. We had a good first half, but I, I figure maybe the you know the legs and the motivation seems to have simmer a little bit, and then you know. The ascendancy was taken over by the other team. So we we we, we when you're playing, when you when you when you have that motivation because you're going through is different from when we're just playing for that, you know, when you say bragging rights or anything like that. But you know, so far I have to reflect on the season and see where we go wrong. And um 
you know, better preparation for next for next season. All right, Coach. Well, thank you so much. Hard luck to you, and we say goodbye to Titchfield, but we'll see you next season, hopefully. Yes, hopefully. All right, that thank was you. Coach Raymond Gordon there from Titchfield High, and uh, now we have a chat with Coach Hilton. Coach, into the second round, uh, a pretty good game for your boys. Are you happy with the result? Yeah, I'm happy with the result. Um, as I said to you earlier, you know, it's about these kids getting into their own, you know, trying to play some positive football, listening to instruction, you know, and they went out there today and they did just that. All right, so I have to ask you about the red card. Uh, <laughs> you, straight red card, three match yeah. suspension. Now, how does that hurt Port Antonio? Um, again, as I said to you, a young team, inexperienced, you know, and just right there with that tackle, you saw the inexperience coming out, you know. So it's about that kid and the team learning from this experience, you know. Let's build on it. Look, it's the game. So we just have to move forward from it, you know, be positive about it. You know, if he's back, then yes, that's good whenever he's back. But we just have to play some positive football without a good player. Well, the group stage is over now. You head over now to the second round. What is preparation going to be like? Of course, you will play one of the higher seeded teams, but I'm sure you'll be ready for whoever comes in front of you. Right. It's football. And whether they're young, yes or no, we're in a competition to win, you know? So these kids and the coaching staff will go now and look at how, what we have done in our periodization and how we move forward now, you know, to get these players ready players ready for the next round yeah you were actually very happy that sports max came out to this side of the country Most definitely uh, exactly how important was it for this game to be on tv and what does it do for football in portland um for one it's a hometown hometown derby you know and at least some of these kids got to showcase what we have to offer here in portland you know they've been watching it for years in every other maybe every other parish in jamaica and they've never seen it here you know so it's something great for the parish for these two teams and you know i know that sports max will be back you know you will be back and again i have to say enough respect and thanks for being here thank you too coach All congratulations right. to thanks you. much All right, so confirmation of the result. Port Antonio beating Titchfield two goals to nil. This in zone N and the point standings as it stands. Happy Grove still lead. Having completed five games, they have 15 points. Port Antonio in second, consolidating their position in second. 10 points, fair prospect, four points and a Titchfield three points. That's how zone N finishes. It's a Da Costa Cup action, continues on Sportsmax 2 and Sportsmax Plus. The Carter College versus Mayday, Saturday, 1 p.m. 2 in the rest of the Caribbean. And the High Flying Manchester High face Bellier, Saturday, 3 p.m. 4 in the rest of the Caribbean, Sportsmax 2 and Sportsmax Plus. SSFL Premiership on Sportsmax, Queen's Royal College versus East Mokorapo Secondary. Saturday, 2.30 p.m., 3.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. So, confirmation of the results. Port Antonio High beating Titchfield two goals to nil. The Port Antonio Derby on the home of champions. Yo, Issa. I school boy football look this season. People, I'm ready, you know. All right, then, pick up. Manning Cup, Oliver Yashil, you make me link up to watch the Champions Cup, Ben Francis, Baka Cup, which team are win the championship this season? Yo, it's a Papa Diver School, I got finish the league and meet now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people? Yo, it's a Missy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the good, but loan the supporters from school and community too. People, nothing at the stand, some are listening to prayer, they want some of what you TV too. Country and turn your night for one reason. It's a schoolboy football. Run, come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I go better than the best and if I hear team beat your chest. It's a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows. So run, come enjoy the show. Yo, it's a... That, that, that.
a competition I never have it nice up. People love see when boy I get dice up on the field. I'm gonna score from far and them love with peaceful and the youths now. Wow. Yo, it's a schoolboy football, no local. The youths are moving to international big league. 